Well, as you can see, a, a rather large box has arrived. Uh, sorry about the bright sunlight, but there we are. I can do some things, but I can't move God's sun. It's big. It took two people to get the thing off the TNT truck. It's resting on my garden trolley. Now, the, the unladen weight of the Loco is 51 kilograms. The box, including all of that, is 75. And I reckon it's going to take me as long to get the thing unpacked than it is to build the kit. But um, let's have a go. There are nine boxes, and then all the boiler certificates. Oh my God. It's gonna take me as long to unpack the kit as it is to build it. It's amazing. Well, that took me about an hour to do to get the thing unboxed. Uh, yeah, it was fun. Uh, lots of boxes. I don't know what's in each of them, but here is the business end. The boiler is actually strapped to the bottom of the crate so that's going to be a bit of a lift getting that one out but if you can see here i don't know if you can see this underneath the cellophane and bubble wrap that's all the backhead detail it looks like it's all complete so all i think i need to do is release these two straps and uh hoik her out the box well, that's the business end of it. Finally got it out of the box. My goodness. Yes, it's heavy. And I should imagine it's the uh, the lion's share of the price of the kit. Let's have a, a closer look at it. So you can see what your hard-earned money buys you. I mean, to my untrained eye, looks pretty impressive. I've looked at the prices, two and a half, maybe 2,200 for the boiler. Forget all the gubbins at the end, which I'm going to come on to. It's very impressive. The only thing I'm a little bit concerned about is this part here was covered by very thick shrink wrap. This seems to have sellotape on it. Now the cladding is glued to the boiler, but in undoing that sellotape there, I can start to lift some of the cladding, but fear not, I'll talk to Mike Pavey. He's the designer of the, the kit and he should know exactly what to do. Now I'm a complete novice at this. I've been doing this building model trains for 25 years, I suppose, but nothing like this. And this is an assembly kit, so it really is the foothills for me. So, okay, whistle. Now this is interesting, I'd have thought that had been sprung, but I'm presuming the pressure in the boiler will hold it open, so boop boop, it'll work like that. Small pressure gauge, I'd like to see it. Um, blow down here for the side valve, I know that much. Firebox. These fittings will no doubt be connected later on in the build. And steam regulator, closed and open. So talking about the boiler, obviously it comes with the paperwork. I'm going to show you that in detail. Uh, you've got a, a live steam boiler gas tank certificate, declarations of conformity, uh, boiler hydraulic test certificate, warranty. Um, and most importantly, this is the fancy brochure. And that's what I got. And that sort of persuaded me that this was the real deal. And here's the front end with 14 fire tubes. I'm going to use a, a barbecue skewer. And you know what? If Matt Watson from Carwow can use a twig to poke it up the arse end of an Audi, I can certainly... Oh, yeah. Oh, I'm not going to lose it. No, all the way in. All the way in. Uh, no idea what these bits do. But I do know a man who does. And uh, his name is Mike Pavey. And here's some details about him. So the man behind these kits, uh, and he's probably been working with Silvercrest and Kingscale for, oh, maybe a decade, is the legendary Mike Pavey. I think Mike Pavey's very well known in model engineering circles. In fact, he's built his own locos, um, but he's uh, collaborated with Kingscale and he's designed the whole range, not just a five inch, but seven and a quarter gauge three locos. Um, so really, I'm very grateful 
to Mike uh, for the hard work he's put in. And I'm also grateful that he's at the end of the phone or the email that I may need to call him. Now we're going to go through the kit box by box. And this is part, yes, you heard it right, part of box eight. Now somebody has gone to the trouble of building this whole loco, taking it apart, stripping it down and packing it and putting it into nine boxes and a big crate. Um, this could take a while, so I'm going to just uh, get them out. I'll tell you what, thanks to the magic of TV, there's got to be a quicker way. Well, that wasn't a five minute job, I tell you. Everything was wrapped separately. Uh, yeah, I'm pretty impressed. Uh, I'm not even going to pretend to know what all these parts are, but there are some notable parts that I do know about. And after we've gone through those, I'll take a closer look at the uh, frames because I have built a test frame. I'll tell you about that in a minute. But firstly, the thing that really stuck out is the buffer beam. So let's have a look at these. On the test chassis that Silvercrest gifted me, there weren't any buffers. I'm going to come to this later and I'm thinking, oh, I don't know how they're going to fit. But this kit comes with, this is the rear one. It's all pre-fitted. So the sprung buffers, go all that tight, are there. Uh, the hook is sprung and this outlet here is uh, if you've got uh, extra water uh, or maybe it's even back by vac pipe breaking i'll have to check and i'll put that in the description so the steps are on so that is a bolt on assembly far different to what i saw in the kit same goes for the front buffer beam again all bolt on and note if you can see here all the bolts that refer to each individual component are positioned in there so you know you're not missing any only not hunting around for bolts and the factory knows that you've got them and in case you're worried of course there is a vac pipe for the back now i'm having a bit of a wild guess here i think that this bit is the piston and control mechanism for the uh, drain cocks and I think that goes in there and connects to two parts on the drain cocks. Now I've got a drain cock here, so I'll try and show you. Now when I got the drain cocks out, you can see, I think that's got to be closed, open, closed, open. I'm thinking, well, manual drain cocks, that's all right. Maybe I can fashion something to go in there. Nah, I don't need to do that because I believe this all connects up and you've got control of the drain cocks. Uh, I presume from the cab, so that's a bonus prize. Now, I think I also know what this bit is as well. I think this is the reverser. There are actually two of them, one for either side. Um, so, yeah. Yeah, I think, I think that's the reversing mechanism of that. And finally, before we get on to looking at the frames themselves, this is definitely one of the uh, frame spacers. I know that because I've built the test frame and it looks like that's another one already attached to this uh, assembly here. So that shouldn't be too bad either. And last but not least, before we put box eight to bed, I'm quite impressed because I didn't see firing irons included. Looks like there might, might be grates in there as well. I haven't undone them, but yeah, bonus prize firing irons. Now I've only unpacked one of the frames. This comes from box eight as well. As you can see, all the fittings, all the screws are in there. I've only shown you one because I actually do have the test frame that I got. So there's, there's not a huge amount of difference uh, between the two. Obviously there'll be frame spaces to go in, but let me bring you in the test frame and show you the difference. Now this is the test frame that I got back in January. Ignore all the bright screws. I have those in stock. I just wanted to bleed up a bit. I wanted to check sizes. Um, and it fits together very, very nicely. Uh, there are in fact, apart from the buffer beams, one, two, three spacers already. And that's about it. But the one thing that I'm really pleased about is they've refined the buffer beams 
and I'll come on to that now. As you can see, I've put some domed uh, uh, nuts in here. They came from Blackgate Engineering. I thought it might look tidier. I didn't want to see bolts protruding with nuts on them there. But now the finished product not only is completely different, it's completely complete. So there's your rear buffer beam. I mean, the steps are attached already. So are the buffers. So is the hook. And here's this bonus I talked about earlier on. That is where the vac pipe goes. It just simply bolts in, into position. And no ugly heads, bolt heads protruding. No silver bolt heads protruding. OK, I could be picky. I could say I might want to get buffer beam red out and touch these in, touch the black bits in. But, you know, I don't think I'll do. I rather like it as it is. It's a greater, much greater improvement on the original test piece that you can see here. And the same goes for the front end. The only difference is this one's already got the, the vac pipe attached. You can't put the vac pipe on the rear until you've done some bits around it. But again, what a great improvement on the original pre-production test chassis. So we're on to box seven now, and this is only a small part of box seven. I'm not even going to pretend to know where all these go. I mean, this could go under the uh, the main uh, cab area or it could go on top of the boiler. I don't know. But I do know that's a whistle. And I do know that's a rather nice reverser. Uh, so it's uh, and it's notched. So I'm used to working with 16 millimeter locomotives and they don't have a reverser that's notched. It's basically on a radio control and it's forward or backwards. But this one, well, it looks like you can actually notch it. But there's more to, to this box than, than meets the eye and I haven't even unpacked the other stuff. So let's do that now. And here are the final bits from box seven. This is the, uh, the lever frame that uh, holds the brakes and there are the brake hangers. Brakes are already installed, so I presume that just bolts up uh, to the sides, yeah, to the sides. And this is the smoke box saddle, though the lump that the smoke box sits on to stop it falling forwards. So, uh, right, on to the next box. We're combining two boxes here. Box four are the two side frames, all printed up, uh, deckled up, I should say. I'll come on to that in a bit. And box six is the boiler wrapper and two little bits that kind of somehow go there. Or it's probably the other way up, I don't know. Ah, there we go. They sort of go there with a nice little bit of uh, brass work there for the safety cover. So nothing much more to report, but I do want to look at the quality of the... Um, I thought it was printing, but it is not. Now, I wanted to take a, a closer look at this, uh, particularly the quality of it, because initially I thought this side tank, it looked like it was hand lined and it can't be at that price. So I thought it would be tempo printed. But no, Mike Paley tells me no. These are actually heat applied decals. So to start with, the whole substrate has got an etched primer on to make sure that the, the top coat sticks to the brass. Then it gets its... Um, stove enamel and then these decals are hot applied so they actually lay them on and put a heat gun across them and i have to say these decals are really really good quality i i've i was fooled um and clearly they've got some sort of clear coat on the top to protect them nothing much to talk about about box five there's your wheel sets but do you see a recurring theme here you know, it's all bolted up. Uh, I don't know if you can see there, but all the nuts are in place. And I believe this crank points towards the centre of the logo. I could be wrong. I think this probably is the middle one. Oh, I could be wrong. I don't know. We're going to find out during the build. But uh, nothing much to report other than, yeah, they're very nice. In box two, very simple. The left and the right cylinder, um, they are already pre-built. And 
if I throw the CAD CAM schematic up now, you can see there's an awful lot of work going into these. Now, clearly, if uh, Silvercrest were to strip these down, you would have a whole box of bits and a whole hill of pain. So I'm rather pleased that they're all connected. And I have learned something, thanks to Mr. Mike Paley, because I didn't know my gudgeon pin from my wall shards reverser. But thanks to a short chat, I'll tell you a little bit more about them now. I noticed that this screw here was only finger tight and I was concerned if I uh, nipped it up too much it would uh, block this mechanism up and I don't want that but he said no it's all recessed but I was trying to describe this and I couldn't but just for you this is apparently the bit that goes there is called the union link and I suppose it's the union between that bit and that bit and um, this bit here is the combination arm or maybe even combination lever i'm not sure and it's all connected by this little bit here um which is a wrist pin and as you can imagine like a wrist it does that on to box three now and the smoke box well it's almost complete um this uh guard rail here actually slides in and out as you can see and I've only just pushed that in. Uh, the running numbers, well there are 10 of these, um, 1501 to 1509, uh, all built I think in 1949. This one is a non-runner, uh, 1501, and is currently on the Severn Valley Railway. But uh, yeah, basically that's the smoke box. Now here you've got the dart holder that drops in. I'm not going to try and do it because I can't see what I'm doing. But that sits in there. Don't make the mistake that I did when I was having a go and trying to build a Britannia and glue the thing in, thinking it would fall out. That has got to come out because here is where all the flues go and you need to get brushes down to clean the pipes. So for heaven's sakes, leave that loose. It's meant to be. So I did lie at the beginning. There is nine boxes plus the boiler. This indeed is box nine. And as you can see, it's got opening doors and it's got a removable roof. So you will see the roof here just drops down in, it goes even further, but I'm not gonna do it as the turntable's spinning. So you, this comes off, you can access all the controls in the boiler when you're running it. I'll tell you now, this is coming apart. The inside's getting uh, spray paint, probably a, a cream colour, and there'll be doll's house plant planking on the floor. And who knows, I might even find a driver figure for it. Well, thanks very much for staying with me on this uh, first video. Purely a quick unboxing. Uh, you can see the quality of the components. I'm blown away. The lion's share of the money, yeah, in the boiler nice fittings i'm going to talk about uh, building when we get to kit one which will be the chassis kit and we'll get the buff beams on and get the whole thing nice and level until then two two catch you next time <laughs>